hello friends welcome back to our channel in this video we are going to discuss why should not we use blocking statements while designing sequential blocks in a very log code and i will present an example which will show the harm effects of using blocking statements in a sequential block and i will also prove that how using non blocking statements in a sequential block resolves all of our problems now without wasting much time let us get started friends as per very log design guidelines one must use non blocking assignments while modeling sequential logics for an example i have shown the code of a d flip flop wherein i have used non blocking assignments and this code is considered to be the right one but the question arises why couldn't we use blocking assignments inside a sequential logic and this is what we are going to cover in the next part of the video friends to show the harm effects of using blocking assignments in a sequential block I have considered these two codes. This is the correct coding style wherein I am using non-blocking assignments, and this is the wrong coding style wherein I am using blocking assignments. In the first go, we will see what is the logic generated by logic synthesizer for both these codes, and then we will see functional simulation for both these codes, and that will clarify the difference. friends before showing you the actual output of a logic synthesizer let me tell you that both the codes are going to yield the same logic by logic synthesizer because all the always blocks consists of single line statements and whenever there is a single line statements inside the always block it does not matter for logic synthesizer whether i am using non blocking assignments or blocking assignments the intention of this code is to infer three flip flops wherein d in will be the input of first flip flop and output of first flip flop will be a and this a variable will go as an input to the second flip flop and the output of second flip flop will be variable b and this b will go as an input to the third flip flop and c will be the output of third flip flop now let me show you practically the logic synthesis for both these codes friends in the first go let us try to see the output of a logic synthesizer for the correct coding style let me press schematic this is the logic generated by logic synthesizer and for illustration i am using vivado synthesizer this is the d input which is going to first flip flop and output of first flip flop is variable a which is going as an input to the second flip flop and output of second flip flop is variable b which is going as an input to the third flip flop and output of which is variable c as i explained earlier now let us try to see the logic synthesis results when i am using incorrect coding style that is i am using blocking assignments let me press schematic friends you see it is also yielding the same results you will not be able to find even a single difference friends we saw that synthesizer is giving same results whether i am using blocking assignments or whether i am using non blocking assignments but keep this thing in mind that in our code right now we have always blocks with single line statements only and as i mentioned earlier for single line statements it does not matter for synthesizer whether i am using blocking assignments or non blocking assignments but in those cases where always block consists of multiple line statements the logic synthesis results will vary and definitely the results will be wrong when i will use blocking assignments that i will illustrate in the next video and i will share its link in the description section and you can also get its link at the end screen now let us see the simulation results and in the first go we will see the simulation results for the correct coding style friends i have tied the value of d in to high from the beginning only so when the first clock edge comes the value of variable a becomes high and in the next clock edge the value of variable a is passed to variable b 
and variable b becomes high and similarly at the third clock edge the value of variable b is passed to variable c and c also goes high so this is the expected behavior now we'll try to see the simulation results for incorrect coding style wherein i am using blocking assignments friends before showing you the actual simulation results let me tell you that the simulation results will be wrong and this is the crux of our video let me try to explain you why simulation results will be wrong when we are using blocking assignments one thing we should always remember which is the limitation of a verilog simulator and that is it executes everything in a sequential manner that means it executes single task at a time then only it can proceed to the next task as per the very law guideline to the simulators simulators need to execute all the blocking assignments which are in the same time stamp in a active region they have the same priority now consider the case if multiple blocking assignments are in a single always block then definitely simulator can make a order the first statement will be executed first and then it will move to the second then it will move to the third and so on now we have three always blocks and all these always block can work in parallel now which statement out of these three statements which statement should be executed first there is no specific guideline friends particularly in this situation where the simulator is not able to decide which statement to execute first because there is no such very law guidelines is called a race condition but as per my observations simulators pick those statement first which appear early in the dot v file for an example this statement will be picked first by the simulator then it will move to this second statement then this third statement will be executed friends for your information the simulation results will vary if i change the order of these statements for example if i take this statement at the last the simulation results will vary friends these three statements are considered to be in the same time stamp because in real hardware whenever there will be positive edge on the clock the first statement is expected to execute similarly in parallel second statement is expected to execute and in the same way third statement is expected to execute but as i mentioned earlier simulator executes everything sequentially one task at a time one statement at a time then how come it meets the expected results when we are using non blocking assignments to understand that we need to understand verilog simulator scheduling events as per the verilog simulator scheduling when we have non blocking assignments so in the first go simulator will try to calculate right hand side of all the non blocking assignments so once right hand side of all the non blocking assignments is calculated then it updates the left hand side of the non blocking assignments so it is a two step process let me elaborate more on the real code as i mentioned simulator is executing all the task in a serial fashion so first of all it will try to calculate d in then it will try to calculate the rhs of second statement then it will try to calculate rhs of third statement so once right hand side of all these statements are calculated then it will try to assign this calculated value to the left hand side so firstly it will assign d into variable a then rhs of uh, the second statement will be assigned to variable b and similarly the calculated rhs value of uh, the third statement will be assigned to variable c so this way we meet the expected behaviors this way simulator ensures that whatever value of variable a updated in the first statement is not impacting the second statement the previous value of a will be taken now let us try to see what happens when we take all the blocking assignment statements as per verilog simulator design guidelines all the blocking assignments comes in a active events region and it is a one step process let me elaborate more on the real code so what happens uh, when this is the very law code the simulator come at this always block first because it is appearing first in the dot v file and 
d in will be assigned to variable a then it will come to the second statement and immediately it will assign the value of newly calculated value of a to variable b and in the third statement it will assign the newly calculated value of variable b to variable c and which is unexpected results now let me show you the real time simulations now friends as i mentioned earlier with the change in the order of these statements our simulation results change which is again a wrong behavior but just for illustration purpose i am taking this order in the first statement a is equal to d in in the second b is equal to a in the third statement c is equal to b now let us see the simulation results let me run simulation as i explained earlier in the first clock edge a will be assigned the value of d in d in is permanently high so a will become 1 but on the same edge b will become 1 and c will also become 1 which is an unexpected and wrong result now just for illustration purpose i am going to change the order of these statements let us take this first statement at the second number and try to see the results run simulation now at the first clock edge simulator will reach at the first statement and the first statement is b is equal to a a has not assigned any value yet the value of a is x in the beginning so b will remain x only so b is x now the simulator will go to the second statement and the second statement is we are assigning value of d into a so value of d in will be assigned to variable a and a will go high and the simulator will go to the third statement third statement is c is equal to b and the value of b was x so c will also remain x so c will also remain x now in the second clock edge value of a is already 1 so the simulator will go to the first statement which is b is equal to a so b will take the value of a and in the second statement a will get the value of d in so d in is 1 a will remain 1 and in the third statement c is equal to b b is high now so c will be assigned the value 1 friends now i will reorder these statements in such a way that we can get our expected results let us take this third statement in the beginning and try to analyze the simulation results now these are the newly calculated results as per our latest ordering d in is always high and on the first clock edge the simulator will go to the first statement which is c is equal to b and the value of b is x so c will remain x and the second statement is b is equal to a and the value of a is x so b will remain x and the third statement is a is equal to d in so a will get the value of d in and will go high now on the second clock edge the simulator will go to the first statement where c is equal to b and the value of b is x so c will remain x and then simulator will go to the second statement second statement is b is equal to a a is already high so b will go high and then it will go to the third statement a is equal to d in so d in is high so a will remain high now on the third clock edge the simulator will go to the first statement which is c is equal to b now b is equal to 1 so c will become high then the simulator will go to the second statement and second statement is b is equal to a so b will, will remain high and then simulator will go to the third statement where a is equal to d in so it will take the latest value of d so this way we can achieve the correct results by maintaining the ordering but which is very difficult and it is not recommended ordering of always blocks should not matter at all so that is why we should always recommend the non blocking assignment statements inside the sequential blocks otherwise you have to take care ordering of these always blocks and it will make your life very hectic friends with this i am going to wrap up this video and i hope that this video would be quite informative for all of you and in future we are going to make many such videos so to be aligned with our channel please subscribe it and to get the notification of all the videos as early as possible don't forget to press the bell icon thank you so much for watching